April 9th, 2020. <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what day it is. So, I decided to pivot again. Uh, basically, I've been running into this very frustrating cycle where I try to, I try to write jokes, I try to write material. I, I, I have this whole arc and whole thing planned out. So in my head, I thought to myself, f during this whole quarantine, I could r write the rest of my hour, really. I could write it and then I could, um, and then I could just polish it. Like I could just write the, all of the joke ideas and this, then just polish it once we go back to doing shows. But what I've come to realize is I, at least so far, I have not found a way to do it without an audience. Like my, my routine is wake up, do other things I do that day, uh, and then rewrite the same jokes over and over again. I like, the, at night, I'll, I'll, um, I'll have a joke written, I'll say it out loud a few times, I'll send it to some comics, they'll, get, they'll be like, yeah, okay, I can see where it's going, in my head I'll be like, yeah, man, I'm so funny, I'm so good, I don't, COVID-19's not gonna stop me. Dog mentality, like I just been dog mentalitying it, and I gotta remember that that mentality, that's not, <laughs> Ugh. I gotta remind myself that that's not, that's not art. Like, if you wanna get fucking douchey and, and armchair philosophical about it, you could say someone like David Goggins is presenting an art or whatever, and, or sculpting your body could be an art, or Joe Rogan's uh, ju jujitsu stuff is an art, you could say that, but the art in the classic sense of the word uh, when you think of arts, you usually don't go, maybe martial arts. All right, maybe I'm wrong. Either way, um, that mentality is really good for just when things make sense and the world is spinning the right way. And, you know, I don't go into grocery stores and everyone's wearing masks. It's surreal, man. It's weird. It's super weird to walk into a store and everyone's wearing surgical masks and so am I. And I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm supposed to see. Honestly, if I went into that store and no one was wearing masks, I'd freak the fuck out. If you asked me, like, hey man, like six months ago, if you were like, <laughs> six months ago, you were like, uh, you were like you could, you're gonna go you're going to go into the grocery store and you're going to be staring at it looks like zombie ghost doctor just walking throughout the grocery store. I would not have fucking believed you, but that's what we live in right now. And it's super, I'm holding off on, um, okay, hold on a second. I need to stop this fucking, okay. That was not going to happen anymore. This episode, I'm sure it was getting annoying. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, I know I don't talk about the virus stuff. Like, I, I leave this these things to just stand-up comedy, but I've just come to a place where I think um, just stand-up comedy is not what I can do right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should take this time. This is my opportunity to not work as on stand-up. I'll just focus on myself right now. I'm going to give it like a day or two and three. I don't know. Time has lost all meaning to me. Time, time means very little to me. Uh, so if I, keep the, if I keep the door shut and if I were to like plaster up the windows, <clears throat> I really, I could stay in here and just have no sense of, <laughs> of what's going on outside. It's super trippy. Uh, it's kind of fun in some ways. Like, I I don't, I think I miss stand-up. I'm aching for stand-up. But I, I have detoxed myself from the need for being around people. Like, I go out, when I go out and I have to do the things that I do, um, 
being around strangers, I'm f- like it is what it is. Like I don't know, I've just been alone all the time, and it's fine. It really does. It actually does. I I think I'm more of an introvert than I realized. So, you know, that's a good feeling. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I I think maybe. Okay, I was thinking like, all right, maybe I was using my relationships and all that bullshit to distract me from my focus, which should have been stand up. And I think that for my career and for what I want to do for my life and my passions and all that stuff, I think that that is the I think that was the right move. But I think that stand up has been a distraction from myself. It's been like a, a, a help to myself. It's been like a good therapeutic process the things I talk about are obviously you know personal things and dealing with those things but I think that maybe this is should be my time to like just worry about myself not in any sort of performance way not in any sort of stand-up comedy way so I uh, I'm gonna do that and I came to this conclusion because I was realizing that without the performing part the performing part is the I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I got to think on it more. But the performing part is this is really necessary for me. I don't know how writers are doing it. Good job, guys. You're you're very talented people. But yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a break from even thinking about stand up. And I realized. Oh, that's what I was saying. I realized when I was when I was writing that. I was being crazy analytical. Like, (laughs) maybe, I don't know, maybe I've I've just been too close to the elephant. Maybe everyone listening to this has just been listening to uh, an autistic man spout out rants about setups and punchlines and knock knock jokes. You ever feel like you're losing, like you're. <clears throat> like you're acting out, I don't, maybe I've watched too many movies. You know, like you're, you're acting out your life, but you're just in a mental institution and you think this is your life. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, no, I, I feel like I've just, I have, in my quest for success and for being good at this, like technically proficient at this, I think that I've lost a little bit of humanity in, in the art form. The fun part, like when I, I know I've been doing all those rants about Patrice and Dave, and I think one of the things that they're doing is they're, they are still being themselves and they're being natural. Like they, they did the mechanics, I think they're naturally just funny people, and they did the mechanics so much and they were so far into their craft and they were so self-confident in themselves that that's why they came off the way they did. There was that technical proficiency and you can hear it when you pay attention to it and you turn it into a little math equation instead of just a fucking joke. And you, versus just laughing and having fun with it and just being yourself. And I think that, um, I think that part of that is a self-confidence, self-confidence, self-confidence is the right word. Uh, Part of that's like a self-confidence thing. So, you know, working on jokes isn't going to fucking help my self-confidence, so I should probably fix that. And then I think the other part is something. That's right. Uh, The other part is the information I was consuming. So I feel like I'm moving more towards myself, like who I am at my core and yada, yada, yada. And people change and they grow and they develop and, you know. Caterpillar to butterfly to human thing, metaphors. But I think I'm, I'm slowly inching towards whoever I am at my purest, regardless of stand-up and all that. And I was thinking about, like, okay, when I went through, if you've been listening, if you've been a real day one, if you really want to go back and listen to some weird shit, Go back to the very beginning, watch it from the beginning all the way till now, and you're going to see the process of someone changing rapidly. It's very strange. Um, but I, <clears throat> I was listening. I had to listen back for my... I had to. Like, it was fucking homework. Um, no, I had to listen back to, to the first, to first episode after my 100th episode. I'm making sense. I'm putting words together. 
and sentences and the, the grammar. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, I um, what, for my hundredth episode, I did a review of listening back over the, I think it was like a couple months, and I, I couldn't do it. I think I gave up at like episode 60-something, 70-something. I got tired of it, hearing my voice. But there was, the, there was a point where, early on, where I, I, was ha- I think I was having issues with motivation. And I started listening to Joe Rogan's podcast more, and then he got me into David Goggins. And I was listening to those guys. I was listening to a lot of, like, Kevin Hart motivational things, and I was amping myself up, and I was like, I was like time to work. And then I, I took it, <laughs> I took it way too far. I, I like ripped the fucking knob. I ripped off the dial from the machine. Like I took it way too far. And then at some point, I can't remember how long it took me. At some point I realized like, oh, okay, I'm, th- this media is giving me motivation and I'm, I'm pumped up and I'm amped, but it's not the art form of it. And, and that's, that's, it's not the human just having fun part of it. So... So then I went from I went from this like Joe Rogan, David Goggins kick to some something else. Patrice O'Neill. I went to, I'm doing I'm doing a loop uh, to Patrice O'Neill and Opie and Anthony. And I was take I was just like, all right, I need to relax. Let me just watch something chill and where people are just hanging out having fun. And so I'm I'm taking that in and <clears throat> and I'm starting to like listening to them was making me more aggressive with people and uh, uh, like not rude like hostile I was just becoming more hostile I started to notice that so I dialed back on that that was pretty that happened pretty fast and I'm sure I went into another phase Uh, there's just a bunch of phases that I go through but I think the reason those that media was influencing my personality so much is because I still need to fill in the pieces of my personality. Like, I, I think it's pretty solidified that, all right, I'm a stand-up comic. I know that. That's, that's there. I, I love film, and I know that. That's there. Um, there's other pieces of me, whatever. Those two things. I'm two-dimensional, literally. No, so I... I... I think that pushing away from stand-up or listening to it just not taking it in like it's homework, taking it in for fucking fun for once and just hanging out I think would be, is going to be good, is going to be a little healthy, just a little bit, just a smidge healthy. And what else? Oh, I was also, I was also taking in a lot of like deconstructing art videos on YouTube. Like I've, I've, put myself down this rabbit hole. I've been doing it for, for a long time, for like years. Um, watching videos that deconstruct stories and deconstruct movies and deconstruct comedy. And I watch it all the time because I just, I just think it's interesting. It's engaging. But it's... I think it might have... <laughs> I think it might have like warped my perception of comedy to the point where I've, I've been I've just been taking all I've, I've taken in all the analytics and I'm not just enjoying it so that's what I'm I'm gonna do as well I'm gonna watch comedy for comedy I'm not gonna analyze it I'm just gonna hang out <clears throat> and uh, make jokes to Aaliyah she's always good good, good audience she does she never boos me Aaliyah Aaliyah what's up What's up? What's up, Leah? She's staring at me. She's fucking creepy. People think she's no. She's fucking creepy. She's staring like she has a death stare on me. She has these steely blue eyes. She has the soul of, of like a Nazi soldier. <laughs> Leah, yeah, come on. Get on the couch bed. All right, that's where I'm at. Uh, apparently, I have more to say on the topic. <clears throat> I was uh, so so with these new bonus episodes. I think I'm gonna pivot that as well. Um, I've been asking things like, 
um, what what advice would you get? Technical stuff. What advice would you give? What pitfalls would you look out for? I think I'm gonna ask them. I think I'm gonna start asking people questions like fun shit. Like, <laughs> who's the who, what comic? Or do you have a story uh, that you laugh the most uh, with a comic with a group of comics? Or, or was there a, a running joke that you had with a group of comics that just never seemed to end? And what was and what happened? Uh, say shit like that. I don't remember what I was saying because I messed with somebody else. Um, I I did something. I um, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna ask. I'm just gonna ask people like silly questions, just stuff that <clears throat> not silly, but stuff that is just more fun. I think I've been wrapped up in the. The, the the business side even more than I think all of that like pent up energy to go perform part of that is is wanting to perform and, and it is fun and the other part of me was like no it was like racing towards the finish line like uh, just trying to make these big leaps and bounds to to become a, a successful comic because I want that very very bad but in my whole reflection about Patrice and, and Louis and C and Dave, it's, I, it, picking apart that whole, um, picking apart the, their, their philosophies and their motivations and their um, skills is fun. I think it's important, and I'm, I'm glad that I'm, I do that. Be able to, being able to look at the minutiae of an art form from its, its, um, what's the word? From it, it's like, God damn it. The fundamentals, like being able to deconstruct the fundamentals of any craft, any skill, any, any technique that you want to learn, I think is good and it's important. But then you also got to enjoy the goddamn technique. Um, enjoy the, 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 not the technique, the, whatever is the whole of it. And I'm going to, in fact, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to listen back. I'm going to listen back to that episode. I'm going to listen to how I talk about it. I didn't finish it. I didn't feel like it, but I think that, yeah, I think it's going to be good to not not worry about um, the future and, and stand up right now. I was listening back and I've, I could hear, I could hear this desperation, this, um, this, he's got, got, <laughs> this like, wanting to push ahead and you just get I'm try, it's, it sounds like I'm I'm out of breath because I'm walking around and I'm also exasperating myself it looks like it sounds like I'm trying to push a, a train like an old freight train just trying to push it across tracks and it's just not working and I think that rushing comes from wasting so much time but right now this is not wasting time I don't think not writing at the moment is wasting time I think it's definitely a a needed change. So, so yeah, I'm gonna, you know, do that whole worry about myself thing even more. And <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely can't turn it off. All right, well, these are the spurts. These are gonna be some of the spurts of, of this 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 uh, obsession of becoming successful in comedy, but. I, the other thing that's been, been on my mind is like when when this is over, I want to be able to come back. I want to be able to come back to to the stage better, and like better as a comedian. And I think that I've been looking at it from the wrong angle. I think that this whole analytical side of stand-up comedy, I think it works when you have shows and you have shit that you're doing, then you have things to analyze, but. The other part of it is just internal. It's just who you are. And so, and I guess maybe the goal won't be 
to come back a better technically proficient comedian, but if I come back uh, just a better person, then I think the comedy will will um, improve on its own. Like if maybe if I can come back with a more zen thought process, um, I can improve more. Well, this has been a, a nice little uh, deep moment we've had together now, hasn't it? All right. Yep. <laughs>